All right, hello guys, and welcome back to Engineering Principles here on Learn.io. Today we're going to be learning about inclined planes, wedges, and screws, which are the last three simple machines. We won't be getting into as much detail on these ones as we did with the last three, uh, just because these are inclined planes and wedges are relatively simple, and screws are just a bit too complicated to effectively explain without going too far into the math. So inclined planes basically think of a ramp any ramp you've ever seen there's two ways to lift a box imagine a box right here and we could lift it directly up or we could push it up the ramp now logically speaking which one's easier well pushing it up the ramp why is that well it's because when you're lifting the box straight up you're working completely against gravity gravity is pushing this box directly against you Whereas if you're pushing it up the ramp, only part of the grav you're only pushing against part of the gravity, since gravity is still pushing the box down. Now, I won't get too much into why only part of the gravity is fighting against you or any of that, because that involves um, trigonometry and sines and cosines and stuff that we don't really want to be dealing with right now. But you're just going to have to trust me that it does make it easier to push it up the ramp or the inclined plane. Now, wedges are relatively similar. Um, easy way to, to imagine a wedge and imagine its function is just to imagine two inclined planes strapped back to back, pushing in on something. It's easier for the object to move around it rather than just moving directly outwards, um, which makes it very, uh, which gives you mechanical advantage. Now, for screws, we're not going to talk too much about them but I just want to highlight a couple things about screws because they're a very interesting uh, machine. So the first thing is that they actually convert rotational energy into linear energy. And what that means is you're, when you're twisting a screw in, you're twisting it, you're rotating it. But the screw doesn't just move around in circles, it moves downwards or inwards. So it's turning that rotational motion right here into linear motion like this, which is extremely useful in a lot of circumstances. Second thing I want to point out is that usually when you're using a screw, it's completely surrounded on both sides by some sort of wall or mechanism. And because of that, uh, or actually a nut like this one, because of that, screws actually have really high amounts of friction. So they lose a lot of their mechanical advantage to friction. Um, and third thing I want to point out is these little lines you see. I'm sure you've all seen them on screws before. These ones right here that I'm drawing over carefully. Still failing, but yeah. Um, those are called threads. Each of those is one thread, and the amount of those that there is per inch of the screw is called the thread of the screw. I know, same word slightly different meanings. Each one of them individually is a thread, but the amount of them per inch is also the thread. It's kind of strange, but um, welcome to engineering, I guess. But yeah, so if you ever hear anybody talking about the thread of the screw and they have a screw with a thread of 13, they basically mean that it has 13 of these little ridges, 13 of these threads per inch. That's going to be more useful in the advanced course when we start talking about threads, pitches, and how to calculate the mechanical advantage for a screw, because it's just slightly different from the rest of these machines. But for now, I hope that was informational, and I hope that helped you guys understand these three machines just a little bit better. Thank you.